Welcome back. We're, we're live. Yes. Stephen Carlson, first <laughs> vice president, Jenny <laughs> Montgomery Scott. You were talking to me as we were coming back. Yes, I do that now and again. Yes, yes, now and again during the break. <laughs> <laughs> Stephen Carlson, first vice president, Jenny Montgomery. Let's start you, from David. there. First yes, vice president, Jenny Montgomery Scott. Got it. Got it. Yes. Got it. Where do we All go right. from here? Uh, we, well, we go from here. Mm. Uh, three things are certain in life. Okay. Death, taxes, and overpriced conferences. Yeah. Uh, we start tonight uh, with the IRS, who you may have been paying attention to this story because we all love our friendly IRS tax agents. Man. Yes. yes. Uh, they spent $49 million on 225 conferences in a span of two years. This is, this is shocking. I mean, you know, Dave, it, when we look at, you know, talking about sequester at the end of last year, saying, you know, can the government cut back 1 or 2%? And they're saying, no, it's going to be a disaster. We're going to have to lay off all these people. We're so lean, we can't afford it. And then this news breaks out. It, it's so difficult to watch. It's, yeah. it, it shouldn't be this way. It, it shouldn't be this way. And we're having a little, you know, I'm trying to be a little tongue in cheek about this because it is so ridiculous, but it's our money hard at work. Yeah. These guys spent $4 million on just one conference. Yeah. I mean, um, it's, a, it's an amazing amount of money. Uh, we have some video here. You may have been hearing about this. This is the Starfleet video. The IRS spent $50,000 on making this video for their conferences. By the way, give us a call here at Look TV. We'll do it for half the price. Um, <laughs> $50,000 to make this video that they show at their conferences. I mean, this is just a joke, right? It's tragic. I mean, when we think about how families are struggling to pay their bills and everything else, and here the IRS is spending this kind of money. I didn't think this was true. I thought this was a joke at first. Then I read into it, I'm like, they actually spent this much money on a start? Who was running the show? I mean, it was like monkeys running the zoo. Well, I can tell you, it was Ferris Fink. He's the head of the IRS Small Business and Self-Employment Division. Mm -hmm. Maybe he can help himself out in finding a new job. He was Spock in that video, by the way. He's the only one in the IRS that has apologized. And really, the only reason he apologized was he went in front of a congressional committee today mm. and, and said the video he sh should never have happened. You know, we talk about the pendulum swinging back and forth. I think this is a case where people are losing faith in the system in a lot of different ways. And the IRS is a critical component of our government to function. And if people are not being held to account, if people are not being held responsible for their action and behavior, it becomes, the system starts to break down. And they're public servants. And I think there's been a, a period of time here where they've lost that focus. We're not serfs. We're not slaves. This is a nation where they're meant to serve and protect and, and this, this role has been really, really compromised. And they're getting paid quite handsomely with money that we're providing through our taxes. The bonuses that um, are out and everything else. So yeah. a lot of bad feeling about the IRS. So, you mm. know, this comes on the heels of them targeting conservative groups because, you know, they just, they flag them and they wanted to give them a hard time. Pretty much that's the deal. But this is dangerous, whether you're yeah. right or left, because if the next party comes in and they're conservative, it just could ease as easily. This, everyone should be concerned about this because we want impartial tax system. There yeah. cannot be this kind of favoritism. Uh, the good thing is that uh, Verizon is not listening in on this conversation, so we're, we're good to go. <laughs> uh. Yeah. <laughs> it, that's, that's another scary thing. We, 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 we are, there are basic freedoms that have to be protected. And they're being stripped away. Yeah. Uh, another startling statistic that I got today um, about employment mm. in our nation. Our employment right now, 58.6% of the United States has a job. Yeah, th this is mind-boggling when you think about this. When we're talking about almost half the population not working, yeah. it's staggering. I mean, it, just a couple years ago, it was 60%. So this, this erosion of people that are working, that are paying taxes, that are not on the system, not dependent on food stamps and all those, the government support, this is critical. And, and this, this loss of employment, we had the unemployment numbers come out today. I remember I've been saying now for months and months, if it's right around that 350 number, that's not any good. And again, we came in at you know, 346 this morning. So the ADP job report, how many people that are getting jobs tomorrow morning is that gonna be critical. Tomorrow. That's the one the markets are gonna be watching, right? Everybody's really nervous about it today. The market was down 200 points mid part of the day and then reversed. There's a lot of nervousness. If it's above 160, 170,000 jobs, everybody will kind of take a deep breath and, and feel better about it. But if it falls below 130 or 125,000 jobs, this is a really negative sign. This is a sign that the economy is not creating jobs in spite of what the stock market's doing. Yeah, and 41 plus percent of our population is sitting at home not working. It's not sustainable. It's not, okay. Um, another thing that we could probably say goodbye to is low mortgage rates. Yeah, you remember we, we talked about this about eight weeks ago, yeah. that, that we really had bottomed out on interest rates. But we're, we're, we're starting to rise now, and here's the challenge, though. 
the housing market starting to recover. Mm -hmm. People are buying homes, and they're able to do that because interest rates are low. If the economy starts going and interest rates start to rise, well, that slows down home buyers. So we're kind of between a rock and a hard place. The Federal Reserve has lowered our interest rates on our mortgage to get the economy going. Once the economy gets going, then interest rates start to go up, and it slows it down again. So this is a very precarious situation with interest rates. Yeah, the average, um, the, the, this week, the average rate on a 30-year mixed-rate mortgage jumped another 10, percent point, 10 percentage points to 3.91%. Um, and are up from 3.3% in early May, mm -hmm. um, that all according to Freddie Mac. Meanwhile, a 15-year loan on average rate 3.03%, up from 2.56%. Uh, if, if you're thinking about buying a house, are you just too late to the party at this point? Well, I think it's going to be very, very difficult to push it much beyond 4%. And okay. right now, this week, it's been and hovering right around that 4% mark for the 30-year mortgage. I, I think that what we're seeing is applications are dropping dramatically. And that's an indicator that the banks aren't having a lot of people come in to apply for mortgages. It means interest rates are starting to become a, 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 a resistance level to people applying for the mortgage. So it's going to be hard for us to go much higher without slowing down the housing market. Definitely a lot of stories, uh, national stories, that are really affecting us right here on Main Street. But let's oh. go even closer to home. Uh, Governor Cuomo late yesterday releasing his casino plan, something you and I have been talking about for quite some time. Right. He's calling for three Las Vegas-type casinos in upstate New York, some slot machines out in western New York, five-year moratorium on casinos in New York City. Obviously, that's to help the ones upstate um, to, to, uh, to flourish. Um, under this plan, the three areas he's looking at for those casinos, as we've been saying, the Catskills, the Saratoga region, and the uh, eastern southern tier, Binghamton up to the Finger Lakes, that area. Right. Um, it would allow for one casino in each region, so no competition. Mm -hmm. And um, we might get a nice chunk of change out of this. $50 million licensing fee, 25% yep. cut of gross revenues going to the state. Yeah, we, we talked about how significant that is. The, for the state to get that much money up front and then have a guaranteed revenue trail for this, there's going to be some challenges. Anytime politically, it's very, very challenging to open up a casino. We're, all, we're well aware of all the social uh, economic conditions that develop in that kind of situation. But having that money up front to be ahead of the curve and be proactive on these things, I think is important. But uh, yeah, I think it's um, looking more and more like this area is going to have one of these uh, available. Yeah, I mean, we've been, we've been saying it all along, Saratoga, 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 your crystal right. ball doesn't need to be too effective to think that that's, you know, we're not going out on a limb here. Right, right. It's more and more likely. We had yeah. the announcement last week of their major expansion there, mm -hmm. and which you believe is just the tip of the iceberg. Yeah, you know, this, this is something that they already have a casino there. They already have the gaming and the systems there. So there's going to have to be a rollout. It's going to be more like phases of the project. I, you know, I, I think with the hotel that's going in now, you know, it's, it's a beautiful hotel, you know, about 130 rooms. Yeah. They're, they're going to have to expand beyond that point. So I, I suspect we'll see it roll out in stages and it will grow as the city grows around it. And if, and if the Saratoga Casino and Raceway get it, they've got plenty of land there to play with anyway. They've got that whole corner. Yeah, it's um, a beautiful you know, spot. Yeah, lots of space. Great spot, a little out of town. So, uh, you know, I know there's been some controversy from folks at SPAC. Um, mm -hmm. uh, Marsha White, the president there, has said yeah. doesn't want it. Mm -hmm. thinks it'll take away from SPAC. Other people in the city say they want it because it'll help bolster Saratoga. Yeah, you know, th this city has so much to offer. It's becoming more and more of a destination. It's always been a destination for the last hundred years. This adds just one more piece of it. I don't necessarily think it's going to take away, but there's going to have to be a thoughtful conversation in the community for that. No doubt about it. Uh, we reported on this last night here on Look News, the uh, Saratoga Economic Development Corporation. Of course, we've been talking about that for quite some time. The right. vote within Saratoga County to split from this uh, independent economic development arm mm -hmm. responsible for Global Foundries, the Target mm -hmm. Center at Wilton, yeah. much more. Um, the county decided to split ways because they wanted to get a member of the County Board of Supervisors on their panel. Mm -hmm. The SEDC said, no, we want politics to stay out of this. Yeah. Um, politics is definitely involved at this point in the game. Yes. Um, the city of Saratoga Springs unanimously approving a resolution Tuesday night that Saratoga County should backtrack and renew that contract. Yeah, this isn't a binding mo mo motion, but it is a significant gesture that there's people in the community that feel very strongly about it. So it's not over yet, like we said before. Keep an eye on this, because it's important. Yeah, we could see other towns paying attention to what Saratoga did. I would not be surprised. All right, Stephen yeah. Carlton, first vice president. Thanks, Jamie Montgomery Scott, thank you, sir. And as always, you can see this segment on our website, looktvonline.com.